What's good things is of all is just Seth Hawk here, and today we are going to be learning how to use the built-in compressor on Final Cut Pro. Now, you don't want to use this directly as a compressor. You want to use it, say, you have a video that you just created in iMovie, just like in uh, Dear Warriors case. So we'll just take this. This is uh, this was yesterday's video. What is good things is of all is just that's yesterday's video, and what you're going to want to do is just open a Final Cut. I already have it in here, but you could just drag it in, because remember, when you're importing, it does not take long to import. So you're just going to go ahead and import, and then you just go over, you click File, Share. Now you can click any of these. I don't know who the heck uploads to Vimeo, but if you really want to, if you want to just do just Apple devices or DVD, I like to do master file and upload it to YouTube directly so I can see the progress bar. Because if you just do YouTube directly, it is not as good as doing it yourself because, first of all, it doesn't use your defaults, so it's a big drawback. So I like using master file. So you just click master file, name it whatever you want. I'll just write test. And now, this is the default size that everybody uses, and this is why Joey was having problems. He didn't know to change the file codec. This is very important when exporting a video, because this is the resolution and basically what your video is going to look like. Apple ProRes 422, I think that is 1080p, but... I'm really not that sure. It might not be. And if you, all of these. Oh, wait. Take note of the size down here. They make a big deal of highlighting it every time you change it. So, almost. This is a little bit more than 5.5 gigabytes. That is, uh, just for comparison, that is the size of one of my flash drives. That just increases it. But it does look nice for the Apple ProRes, but it really doesn't matter if you're making a quick video or just... It's still... Uh, these are all 1080, but the one I'm going to show you guys is 720, which is just as good. You really can't tell the difference. Uh, this is also a good alternative. This lowers the size, too, and I don't know how good of a quality difference this and this is, but... You guys can check that on your own. I don't know who uses these, but those are insanely huge. This is the one, H.264. You want to set it to that, and this is the smallest file size it'll make it. 965 megabytes is the smallest size that this thing could possibly get in Final Cut. There is no other file codec to make it any smaller, and this is the one you want to use every time you're exporting a video because it still keeps it solid 720p. And it is perfect. I do this for all my videos when I learned this. And it is amazing while you're uh, exporting slash uploading. So I'm just going to show you how quick this is. So I'm just going to name a test, put it on a desktop. You're going you're gonna to get a, click the this thing. And it'll pop up right here. Sharing. And look how quick that goes. At the other one, I'll, I'll even do a comparison in a couple seconds. <coughs> so, now, you can see it on your desktop. You can see it right here, but it's not fully finished, so you cannot directly upload this file. You need to wait till you can see the actual video, just like in this file. So, you can have to wait. But... <coughs> Sorry. For a nine and a half minute video to be exporting and already at twenty percent in under a minute, that is pretty impressive. And it's gonna be going slower because I'm using uh, Camtasia. But to be recording this, it's gonna go a little bit slower for me. But it exports insanely fast and. Let's just let me just show you how quickly that could actually upload. So we're gonna open up Safari. Upload. 
And where's the swarm tutorial to that move? This is the this is the video I uploaded yesterday. This is with the settings that I'm talking about. These are the exact settings. Drag it into the YouTube. And two minutes for a ten minute video is great. And now I don't wanna really post this. So just cancel that. Yes. So we're gonna go over that and Yep, guys, that's basically how to use the built-in compressor on Final Cut Pro. We're just going to X that out because we really don't even need this. That's how to use the built-in compressor. And so, hope you guys enjoyed the video. And I'm pretty sure this is going to help some people like Joey. So, it's been Death Hog. They found that like button. And I am out.